Hi guys, in this video I show how to extend classes without using inheritance or composition and let's get started after the fade. So we're going to start with creating a new project and the new project will be Visual C++ and it's going to be an empty project and I'm just going to call this, what am I going to call this? I'm going to call this function pointer example you can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it function pointer example. Just make sure you click on empty project and I'm going to click on OK. All right, I'm going to create a new item in here and it's going to be a CPP file. And this is going to be our main entry point into the application. So I'm just going to write this out just in all in the one hour and I'll, I'll explain it uh, later on. For those of you who are not familiar with C++, uh, I'll do that. So. Actually, I don't think we need IO stream in this one because we're not going to be actually including that. So we will. No, we do need it. It's all right. Of course, we need it. We need it for system. So I want to pause the output when we run the the, the program. I want to, to have a pause there. Um, okay, so this is the sort of uh, main entry point to the the, the program. Uh, the purpose of today is to show you how powerful function pointers can be. So in order to do that, I'm going to create uh, another couple of files. Uh, the first one of which is a header file. Uh, and this is going to be for a class. So I'm just going to call this um, C looper. Uh, let's call it looper. Uh, we can add the looper later on. And then I'm going to add another source file here, this time a C++ file. And I'm also going to call that looper. Now looper dot cpp is going to contain all the function definitions for our uh, our new class. So I'm going to create a class called looper. And looper is going to have a couple of public things. So the first thing it's going to do is going to have a looper. Um, Yeah, I think we'll leave that there and then we'll have it as a display as well. So this is our constructor and this is our um, display, the loop. So our loop is just gonna go from one to 10. Actually, let's give our constructor some meaning, shall we? Okay, so. Let's say it takes an int start, int end, and let's give it some private uh, value. So we'll call this int m start, int m end. Okay, and then we will do uh, m, st oh, m start, uh, start, and then uh, m end. Um, okay, and then we need to, we're not going to have this, that's, that's, our, that's our constructor, that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to have a display for the display loop. So this is going to be inside our looper.cpp file. So I need to include my header file in here. So I'll do include looper.h and then I'm going to do uh, void c looper and then I'll have my display method here. And my display method is going to go from the start to the end and then display those numbers. So I'm going to do for int i equals m start. i is less than or equal to m end. Let's do it inclusive. It doesn't really matter. And then I am going to do, um, well, I need input output here. So I need some kind of output because I want to do C out I uh, standard end line. 
So I want to display this on one line at a time. So I'm going to do, you know, let's say we go from one to 10. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on separate lines. Okay. So that is our class there. So there's our class uh, definition, uh, declaration, I should say. And our method definition is inside looper.cpp. So if I create, uh, if I do include uh, looper.h, I can now create an instance of this class, looper. Um, and I can pass in one and 10, and then I can do looper.display. And so I should, once I compile that, uh, control shift B to compile. And we run it. I'll get a vast telling me that I'm doing something wrong because even though I turned it off, it turns itself back on after a while. Deep scan is incredibly annoying when you are a developer. So there we go, we have our loop here that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is exactly what we want. Uh, or is it? What if I wanted to display all the numbers that are prime numbers? Or if I want to display all the numbers that are easily divisible by two, or maybe all the numbers that are divisible by three, how would I do that? Uh, now what I could do is I could extend the class. So I have my uh, my looper here. I have my looper definition there. I could mark that as virtual, and then I could I could redefine it later on in in, in classes. I could use inheritance. I could use composition. I could um, I could include that in another class and I could do some loops or and this is the third method I'm going to pass in a, a function a pointer to a function and then I'm going to call that function and then that's going to determine whether I should display something or not so I'm going to do that, do that inside the constructor you don't have to do it inside the constructor you could probably do it inside the display but seeing as how we have parameters here we might as well do it in here so the first thing I need to do is I need to create a uh, a type def so that I can pass these in. And uh, you don't have to, you could just use the function pointer itself, but it's a lot easier if you use um, a, a type def. So uh, my type def I'm going to call validate uh, and it's going to return a Boolean value and it's going to take in an integer. So it's going to look kind of like void um, validate. Oh, sorry, it's not going to look say void, it's going to be bool validate int value. So it's going to look like that. That's the kind of method that I want to, I'm just going to zoom in there. That's the kind of method that I want to uh, create here. Now I want to be able to pass that into this constructor. Uh, so what I can do is I can do type def. So now a type def is just saying when every time you see the, the validate, what I want you to do is I want you to pretend that it is, uh, not pretend, uh, I want you to use that as my function pointer. So my function pointer looks like that. And that's it. That's all I need to do to change that. So now I can pass this in uh, as my, um, as a parameter here. Now you'll see that it's got a squiggly thing that sorts itself out. Now I don't do anything with it just now. So I need to add another function, another uh, uh, member field down here. Validate called validate. Um, let's spread these out a little bit, uh, and we'll add some comments. Starting value inclusive ending value validation function. Okay, so that's the validation function sorted out, and then I just add that to the end of my. Um, my initializer list, so m validate, validate. Okay, now there's no there's no code required in here. All I'm doing is I'm setting these values. So the, the, if you're not familiar with this, this is just the, the initialization uh, of these internal variables inside there. All right. So in my main, you'll see that I now have it says error no instance of matches the argument list int int. So I need to add another one, which is just for, for just now, we'll put in null. 
And then inside my display, uh, I can then say bool is valid equals true. And then what I want to do is if, if I have a pointer to a function, I want to call that function and then put the value in there. And then I'm going to check to see if it is valid, is true. And if it is true, then I'm going to, I'm going to display whatever is in this line. So if m valid, validate. Uh, now this can either be zero, null, or it can have a value. And if it has a value, then we're going to assume that it's valid. Is valid. And then, although this is a member field, this is the validation function. So you see over here in my in, in here, I get validation function. Um, call this to validate the number. So I can have that there. So if I go back to my looper.cpp, uh, you'll see that it now changes the the tooltip there, which is super handy because then you can you know you can add comments and you get information about your own program. So if this is valid, I can actually call this because it's a pointer to a function. So it's it's just a function. So if I do m validate, and then I pass in the integer value, which is my i. I now have either true or false inside this Boolean value. Now, if I don't specify a, um, a function, everything works and it, I just display this number because I, I default is valid to being true. So I'm going to say if is valid, oops, display the number. All right. So compiling it, what, what do you think is going to happen? Well, nothing. It's going to display exactly the same thing as we did before. But this time, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But it's been validated. It just so happens we're not validating against anything because we don't pass in a function that matches that, um, that function pointer signature. So the function pointer signature is it returns a Boolean value and takes an integer. So let's create a function that does that. So let's do... Uh, bool is even. So this is my uh, check to see if a number is even or not. So that's my function prototype, and now I need to declare that function. So I need to do bool is even value return value to equals zero. Okay. So if my number modulus two, in other words, it gives me the remainder of this value. So let's say we have two, that would be two remainder zero because two divided by two is one remainder zero. And similarly, if I did three, that would be one remainder one. So that would be uh, an odd number. So if the number is zero, that means it's an even number. So if I want to display only the even numbers, I go back up to my line nine here, and then I pass in is even. Okay, and you see there's no errors because it's perfectly valid code. I'm passing in the address of this function. Now, if you want to be portable, uh, you should put in the, the ampersand. Um, I think I think Microsoft compilers. I'm not entirely sure other compilers, but certainly Microsoft compilers let you get away with not putting the ampersand in, but you should for portability put it in just in case you take your code across to somewhere else and you get thousands of errors for things. So now when we run the code, every time we display a number, it's going to call this function here, which is inside our main program. We haven't, the only thing we've altered in, in our, uh, our, our class is we've added this extra item. So this is what you need to think of when you're building a class is, what information do I need to do to, that can make my class extensible uh, without me having to rewrite my class? So if we think about how we're going to process these things, then, um, uh, then we can make our class much more uh, future-proof, almost. Sorry, my phone just vibrated there. I'm wondering if that's going to pick up the recording. Uh, okay. So now we pass in our function here. So when we run this, we're only going to get those even numbers. So now what I can do is I can actually do 
Um, standard, see out, even numbers. And line. And then I can do bool is um, divisible by three. Uh, int value. So now I can do bool is divisible by three. Int value. And then I can do the exact same thing, except it's going to be with threes. So I can do that. Um, of course, we can't pass it in just now. So this is why you've got to think about how you're wanting to do these things. So maybe, um, maybe you want to have an override function, I guess. Um, well, let's let's just do it this way. So here's the even numbers, and then here's divisible by. Three, and then we pass in our is divisible by three, and we call this looper two because we don't want to confuse it with the previous looper. So now I have my even numbers two, four, six, eight, ten, and then I have ones divisible by three, so I got three, six, and nine. Uh, and all I did was I added this extra function completely out with the class. I didn't change any of the class. All I did was I just changed what function is being called there. And then similarly, I can actually just have a, um, let's say we have a, a default, default looper. And I just pass in null here. And I can just call this all the numbers. And I can recompile this. And now I get all the numbers, even numbers, divisible by three. And I've changed nothing in my C++ class. All I've done is just call these functions here, or create these functions here. And now I have three different functionalities from the same class. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're looking for the companion video, I'm gonna move slightly over this way. If you're looking for the companion video for uh, this for, for C Sharp, it is available uh, I'm going to try and guess there. Oh, I got it right. Um, it's very difficult to see mirrored things. So if you're looking for the companion video, it's there. Um, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, and until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.